Okay, so that's um, Tate Modern, obviously. I'll be talking mostly about Tate Modern because it is literally the engine of all of Tate um, and uses the most resources. That building alone uses the same amount of energy as 28,000 homes every year. So in July 2019, Tate directors declared emergency and uh, part of that was um, a commitment to reduce our carbon footprint by at least 10% by 2030. That's on top though of the 40% that we've already done since 2007, 2008. Um, I personally don't believe in doing less is more. I believe in doing less and more and that's kind of the approach that we've taken. So um, the 40% that we've done already mostly comes from lowering the energy consumption, looking at our ways through exhibitions, but we're, you know, new lighting controls and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we are also um, producing so solar power, harvesting our rainwater, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this year, since declaring emergency, we've switched to renewal of electricity across all of our galleries. Um, so there's four different Tates across the UK, so they all have um, renewable. Our tender processes now um, have a stipulation for sustainability for all of our contractors um, and suppliers. We're really focusing on the impact of our exhibitions, and those of you that have to heat control will really understand that. Um, and we're considering what our platform is um, to have that conversation and action with the public. Uh, we've got new water fountains in, there's discounts on t-shirts if you bring in an old one to recycle, etc, etc. Our two largest enterprises, um, one of course is our shops, of which there are many. The bookshop has an eco uh, section in it. Um, our publishing arm only uses recycled or FSC paper and all of it is non-toxic ink. But recently they've come up with this policy which is coming into place now and I absolutely love it and that is one thing that I have been inspired by as well. Catering is massive for us at um, Tate Modern and I did a count on this and I've still not tried to correct. We've got eight different cafes and restaurants just at Tate Modern. Now none of our waste goes to landfill. Food waste is commercially composted that at around 70%, I think it is, the rest goes to um, a waste energy uh, scheme. Um, there's actually four pages of very small print, very tightly bulleted things that our catering company, um, of, the of, the com of the company, has done. It is too much to go into, but it is, it is already, over the last years, I mean, there's hundreds and th hundreds and thousands of tons of waste not going to landfill now from what they're doing. As an example of um, something, I'm using a Tate example here, and it's something at Tate Exchange. So I want to offer this as an example of the kind of practice that we do at Tate Exchange, which is around social justice, uh, civic, um, well not civic, social justice, activism, uh, socially, social practice, art. Um, and this is um, All Rise for the Planet, uh, which was a um, community, uh, sorry, um, a sort of citizens' assembly model, and I want to get right here, so all right, so it's done by Plan B, 198 Contemporary Arts and Learning, Extension Rebellion, People's Bureau, London College of Communication, and True Name Theatre. So it took place in July this year, it convened a group of 100 people in the year 2030 for jury duty uh, to judge everybody's actions now in 2019, um, and we were all found incredibly guilty, as you can imagine. Um, We've cleared, this is coming into the provocation, so we've cleared the low-hanging fruit of um, carbon change at Tate Modern and across the rest of the building. So we're now in the really systemic stuff, which is um, complex and difficult, and it will bring about change front and back in house in all sorts of different ways. Change in museums, as we're probably all aware, is contingent on so many factors. Um, and we go through processes of very deep thought because we need to know that what we're doing is right. I don't want to change that, but how do we work at that pace when realising that climate emergency is not going to wait for us? Um, we also, at Tate Modern in particular, we have an institutional staff of about 1,500, and there are massive power differentials in that about who can do what and still be able to do their jobs as they are. So how do we support them do their jobs or how do we change their jobs um, in this? Um, 
we're also having very deep questions about what we are particularly around as a visual arts museum. What can we do for that? I question, just one very last point, I question the notion of museums as a civic space. Not all museums have the capacity to be an active civic space, but all of them can be a relational space, and I think there's a real positivity in that. And I also question, or have a question, about whether we think of the museums as a space for the commons gives us that equal buy-in and community aspect of thinking that we need to have with all of the people that we talk about.